So how has your relationship to or interest in Yiddish evolved over your life? This is a difficult one for me to answer, actually. This almost gets back to feeling that I am somehow hardwired or it's genetic, but I don't know how there can really be a, a Yiddish gene. I heard Yiddish growing up, not a lot. As I said, it was when my parents didn't want me to know what they were talking about. My father was a native Yiddish speaker because his parents spoke Yiddish, almost only. My father was the youngest, so his, my older uncles spoke Yiddish as a, a first language. By the time my father was born, there was English in the house, so he spoke both. I heard Yiddish. When we moved to Doylestown, my father met somebody who I'm actually still in contact with. He's 92 years old, and I went to celebrate his birthday with him last month. And my father and Josh would talk Yiddish to each other. So I heard them talking Yiddish because Josh was born in Lithuania and was also a native Yiddish speaker. So I heard Yiddish a bit, but I was always sort of fascinated by the exotic nature of the language. When my sister was born, she's a lot younger than I am. When my sister was born, I remember my father talking to his favorite cousin in Yiddish, telling her about the birth of my sister. And maybe it was just that they both liked speaking Yiddish, or maybe it was more of a connection of some sort, but that actually made an impression on me. And at one point, I saw an interview on television, on the Dick Cavett Show, which dates me, certainly, with Isaac Besheva Singer, who I didn't really know much about at the time, but I knew he had, he had won the Nobel Prize and that he wrote in Yiddish, and I'm not sure why I was watching it, but I was. And he was asked, why does he still write in Yiddish? And then just have it translated since he spoke English well. And he said that Yiddish is a language that is based on human behavior. It's not technological. And his example was that there is no way to give a verbal tour of an airplane cockpit in Yiddish. There is no Yiddish word for altimeter or landing gear. But he went on to say, however, if you want to talk about an idiot, there are 10 different ways to express an idiot in Yiddish. There's the village idiot. There's stop being such an idiot. There's my brother-in-law is such an idiot. He said there are different ways of constructing this. And I found this fascinating that the language was so fine-tuned that to explain human behavior, which I find fascinating. And I use certain Yiddish words, and I would find that when people who didn't know what they meant, I would use them, they would slip out, like schnarrer, for instance. And somebody who didn't know what it would mean would, would say, well, what, what does that mean? And I realized that you cannot define schnarrer in one or even two Yiddish words. It's an attitude, it's behavior, but Yiddish, uses the word schnarrer, and you just know what it means. And I find that fascinating. So it's just, for some reason, I always enjoyed that aspect of Yiddish.